Once you have round four done, you would repeat on, you know, continue on with all of this through rounds uh, five and 13, where you repeat rounds two and four, a total of three more times than you fasten off. I'm gonna show you what that will look like right here. I'm gonna set this aside. So I have went ahead and I went ahead and did all three more times. So all of my repeats, and this is the top of my foot. So I have my nice four front post double crochets right there. There's my back post double crochet, kind of creating that ridge right there. You can see it's back there in, in the inside. My front post, my back post, and then my cable stitches. They are look like really great twisted stitches right there. Can you see that? And then the carry on, if I were to flip this over, just like it was the heel of my sock, as I had mentioned before, I have all of these nice post stitches. Now, all of my chain twos that did not count as a stitch, they sort of go in the gutter right there. Can you see that? They just kind of disappear as this lays down flat. If I were to flip it inside out, the inside, you guys, looks really neat, right? Because you have these nice ridges right here. Those are all of the tops of the stitches because we worked around the post. So all the tops of the stitches are in, on the inside of the actual piece. And that would be the top of the foot. So that's all of those stitches. Isn't that cool? I think that looks really neat. Okay, go ahead and get to this point, this point in your stocking, and then we will jump in and I will show you how to do the heel, and we'll move on and work into the leg, and then finally the cuff. Okay, so you have a toe and a foot. It's time to create the heel. Let's get started. Now, if you wanna follow along in the pattern, you can use the same color for your heel as you use for the toe, but I'm gonna change it up and I'm gonna make a green heel because I just wanna make it a little bit different. So the first part of the instructions say that we are going to skip 31 stitches and join and draw up a loop in our heel color in the next stitch. So if I count all the way around, starting at our joint or where we finished off right here, 31 stitches is actually that first stitch of the 11 um, front post double crochets. Okay, so I'm gonna join right there and I went ahead and I marked it. And then I read on in the pattern and it said, when you join and, and add, your, um, add your yarn, we're gonna single crochet in that stitch and in the next 10 stitches to this joining spot, and then we're gonna go ahead and do them into the next 10 stitches. So that makes it all the way over here to this point. So I've went ahead and I've marked my points. You don't have to do that, but I just find it easier to have a, like a, a know what I'm doing ahead of time so I can make sure I'm doing everything correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start over here where it tells me to, and in this 31st stitch here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to join my new color. So I'm gonna go ahead and join with my slip stitch like I normally do and I'm gonna chain one. Now it says to single crochet in the same stitch, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my single crochet, and I'm not doing it around the post or anything like that. You notice it's just a single crochet. And I'm gonna go ahead and do it in the next 10 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I did it in my ten stitches, and then it says to the joining of the last round of the foot, and that's exactly where I am, that's the join for the last round of the foot, single crochet in the same stitch as the joining, so the same stitch as the joining, which is right here, and then the next 10 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. See how that worked out? Perfect. So we have this really nice base for our heel, okay? Now it says leave the remaining 20 stitches unworked. So we're gonna leave all of these, all of these that are at the top of the foot unworked. We aren't gonna worry about those. And we're gonna do rows two through 10. So two through 10 is to chain one and turn. So we're actually turning our work this time. I'm gonna tuck my ends in so they're out of the way for me. 
and it says to do a single crochet two together. So to do that, I'm going to go into the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. So I have three loops on my hook, yarn over and draw through all three. So I've single crocheted two together and then single crochet into each stitch to the last two stitches. So what I'm doing is I'm working a decrease. I'm gonna begin doing short rows and that's how I'm gonna create this heel. I'm doing a short row heel. It's really convenient, really easy, and not difficult at all. And there's many different ways to do short row heels, um, but I love the way that Jessie Rayat wrote this pattern out to do this heel because it doesn't have to be um, you know, too extravagant, too difficult, because it's just a stocking. It's not like it's a sock or anything like that that we have to wear. Not saying that you cannot use these short rows on a sock itself. You absolutely can. Um, it's just one of those things that I find it really nice the way she wrote out the pattern. So I'm almost here to the last two single crochets. Once I'm there, I can do my single crochet two together. So I can see here, I have two single crochets. So I'm gonna do pull up a loop, go to the next one, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. And then it says to chain one and turn. So I'm gonna do that back and forth, back and forth, um, through row 10. So that was row two. So I'm gonna turn and I would go on to row three. So that would be go ahead and do my single crochet two together, right like this, and then to the end. Go ahead, finish rows two through 10 for the heel, and join me back here. I'll get you worked working through rows 11 through 19, and then we will fasten off and jump into the leg, okay? You finished row 10, let's go in and do row 11 through 19. So you've completed row 10 and you should have something that looks like this. It's kind of like a, a triangle sort of, and you're left with four stitches right here. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and do row 11. So we're gonna do our chain one and turn. So I've chained one and I've turned, and I'm going to go ahead and do two single crochets in the first stitch. So where before I was doing decreases, now I'm going to do increases. So I've done two single crochets in the first stitch and I'm gonna do a single crochet into the each, or into the, into each stitch to the last stitch. So I'm here at the last stitch and I'm gonna do two single crochets in this stitch. See that? I'm gonna repeat doing this, increasing two stitches at these two points until I get up to 22 stitches. Once you get up to 22 stitches, go ahead and finish off your work and join me back here and I'll get you started on the leg. All right, so you finished the heel of your stocking and it's time to jump in and begin the leg. So let's look down here and see how we're gonna do that. If you look down here, you can see what I've got so far. I've got the toe of my sock, the body of my sock or the foot, so this is the top of my foot. And then if I were to flip it over, that's the bottom of my foot, my heel, or my, uh, going to my heel, and the green is my heel. And it kind of looks like a fishtail, right? But what's gonna happen is, as this edge is sewn to this edge at the finish, it will create a really nice cup of the heel. And that's what I said where I really like the way Jesse wrote this pattern like that. So what's gonna happen now is we're gonna join our yarn at the 12th stitch from the, the last row we did on the heel. And we're gonna do half double crochets all the way to the end here and into the stitch that we joined with originally right here at the bottom for this part of the heel. And then we will work in pattern all the way across to the next section and then we'll continue on finishing up the row right there. So what's really great is as we worked the, the foot right here, we began to notice that there is a rhythm, a pattern, right? You don't really have to look at the stitches you can see, or you don't have to look at the pattern, you can look at the stitches and know what they are. And we're gonna find that that's the case also as we're going back to the foot. As I rotate this up, and I go ahead and I count nine stitch or 12 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I'm gonna go ahead and using the same color that I used on the foot, you don't have to, you could totally change colors if you want to at this point, but I think it's best to use the same color and that's what Jesse recommends as well. I'm gonna join my yarn and do a chain two. Now at this part of the pattern, it says that this chain two does count as a stitch for this part of the heel only, or not the heel, but this part, this round, how about that, for this round only. So I'm gonna mark that, 
having trouble getting that in there. So I don't want it to fall out. Okay, so I've marked that, and I'm gonna do a half double crochet in the next 10 stitches. So I'm gonna get all the way to the end here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then it states that it wants me to go ahead and working in the half double crochet, work a half double crochet in the same stitch as the last stitch of the first row of the heel. So meaning right here, this was the first stitch of the heel. So I'm gonna work a half double crochet right there into that same stitch. And that's what's really gonna connect this, this round together. And then it says to go ahead and do a back post around the next stitch, which is exactly what it looks like, right? So remember when I talked about reading your stitches, this is where it is, so we've done a back, we've done a back post. We're gonna do a front post. And then I'm gonna do a back post. And it's time for my cable. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my cable. There's the first section and the second section. And I do my back post. My front post. You really start to know this pattern really well as you get going along. Did you guys find that? The case. Get myself some more yarn. And then I'm going to do four front posts. post, front post, back post, cable, you know I'm being quiet but I feel like you guys are working along with me, you don't need me to talk too much, right? Back post, front post, back post and we are back to our join here. So what we've done here now <clears throat> is as we're gonna half double crochet into the same stitch as our, our stitch right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my half double crochet and then it says we're going to, and that would, um, the first row of the heel, and then we're gonna half double crochet in the first 11 stitches of the heel. So we're gonna go up the heel, so one, I'm starting, I'm going down the wrong way. Oh, there we are. All right, so I've done it in my heel, and I've got to come over here and grab this. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I started to go along the edge there. So I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to go into the 11 stitches of this one, guys. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm right here. Once you have double crochet into that stitch, you've got to grab the other end of the heel over here, and we're going to begin working the next half double crochets into this section. So it's the other half of the heel we just finished. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then we're going to join with a slip stitch to that stitch we have marked. Remember it's easier for me to get into it when I unmark it, so I'm going to go into that stitch and join with a slip stitch because that counted as a stitch. And what you'll notice is that you're back to 44 stitches. Okay, so we have 44 stitches. For round two, what we need to do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna begin with the chain two. Now the chain two for this round does not count as a stitch. Remember, it only counted on that last round. Once we've done the, we've done the chain two, the instructions state it wants us to do a front post double crochet around the chain two from the previous round. This is really similar to what we did when we started working the foot onto the toe, right? 
So we just did a front post double crochet and then we're supposed to do a front post double crochet around the next three stitches. So there's one, two, three. So now we have to do a back post double crochet and then a cable over the next two stitches. So not we have to skip this one, come to the next and do a cable and then come back over here to this one and do a cable. And now we're going to do a back post around the next stitch. So I make sure that I'm not working into any of the stitches I've already worked into. I'm going to go and do a back post. and then do a front post around the next four stitches. So there's one, two, three, and four will be, bring me all the way over here to where I am beginning to work on the foot again and I will follow in pattern. So essentially I'll be doing exactly what the foot pattern is already telling me to do if I read my stitches. So I go to the back, to the front, to the back, and then I have to cable. So what's really great here, what we're learning is that as you begin to work the leg of the pattern, it's no longer that you just have front post double crochets along the back of the leg you're actually doing full stitches, okay? This is just like you would do if you were working a um, actual sock. You would do something that was an all around pattern around the leg of the stocking. Here I am, I just finished the top of my foot in pattern just like I normally would, and it's time for me to go ahead and do my um, four front post double crochets, which is what the last four stitches are in the brackets. So there's one, two, three, four. So I've gone ahead and done that and now it's time for me to do a back post double crochet. And I'm gonna do a cable over the next two stitches so there's one and two. And then I'm going to do a back post double crochet, making sure that I don't accidentally go into the same post that I completed my cables in. So I've done my back post and I'm gonna do a front post around the next four. So one, two, three, four, and remembering that that chain two does not count as a stitch, I will join with the slip stitch to the top of my very first front post double crochet. So <clears throat> right here it says in the instructions, no, do not work into or around at the beginning chain two throughout rounds three through 26 of the leg. That's what I just told you, so make sure you don't do that. You can see here, as I extend my loop up, what you've done is you've created a new pattern throughout the leg, correct? So we are maintaining our stitch pattern from the top of the foot, and there we are creating a new pattern for the back of the leg. So our full leg pattern will be different. It'll be the same stitch pattern going up the front, and then we have front post, a back post, a cable, a back post, and then we have really cool front post again, back post, cable, and a back post, and then front post. So when you carry on with round three, four, five, so on and so forth, as you're reading the instructions, it's essentially maintaining this pattern. So you're gonna maintain this pattern throughout until you get to round 27. When you get to round 27, you're gonna complete the entire leg by doing a round of half double crochets and doing some chains to create a loop so that you'll be able to hang your stocking at your mantle, correct? 
Go ahead and finish through round 27 and join me back here. I'm gonna get you started on the cuff and how to use the fur yarn. I wanna note that in the first part of the instructions, I said that you only needed your eye hook, which is a lie. You're gonna need a bigger hook also for the fur yarn. So please make sure that you have a large hook for that as well. Um, I do believe that she recommended a, yep, a size M, which is a size 13, US 13 for this fur yarn. And we're gonna add that to the top of our leg, okay? So get some crocheting done and join me back here for the cuff. All right, so you have your stocking complete. Look down here, I'm gonna show you how you add the fur trim to the top of your stocking. Even though I don't have a full stocking here, I'm gonna show you how to do it, okay? Now, as you guys know, I am on location, and of course, it would be that I forget my size M crochet hook. So I am using my US size 10 and a half. So it's, it's a little bit smaller than the 13 that is suggested, but we're gonna make do with it, okay? So I have ripped back all the way to where I'm just looking at the foot of my stocking because it's just the same number of stitches that we've had all along and I wanna just show you how this is gonna work. We have the lovely boutique fur yarn right here and if you take the label off, this is one of those balls that you want to not pull from the inside. You do wanna find the tail on the outside and you're going to use that. Now it's very difficult to see the stitches as you're working along, so you really just kind of have to go by feel. And it's only one round, you're not, it's not that difficult at all, okay? Now with the right side facing you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna join the yarn with a slip stitch. So I'm just gonna pick a point back here and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna yarn over it. And I know it's hard to see you guys, I know that. When you yarn over, there is a seam in the eyelash right there, and you're gonna use your hook to go around that seam. Can you see that right there? And that is what you're going to pull up and through. So once you've done that, you're gonna chain three. You just have to kind of go by feel. One, two, three. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to skip the next stitch. So we're gonna skip the next stitch and work a double crochet in the next one. So once again, going by feel, we yarn over our hook, Skip one, go into the next one, yarn over our hook, pull up a loop, and it's hard to see. I know you can't tell that I have three loops on there, but I do. Yarn over and draw through two of them, and I messed up. See, I've already, I couldn't get through one of them, so I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna yarn over, skip a stitch, go into the next one, yarn over, pull up a loop. So I have three on there. I'm gonna yarn over, draw through two, there we go, yarn over, and draw through two. Now this yarn is very, very, very furry. They picked a really great name for it. So once again, the biggest thing about this yarn is you've gotta go by feel. So we're gonna skip a stitch, go into the next one because we're repeating this. So as I'm working along, I'm relying on the seam of the, the yarn right here and my hook, just relying on being able to grab that seam to work the stitches. So I'm yarning over, going into the stitch on my stocking, Yarning over, pulling up a loop, yarn over and draw through two, yarn over and draw through two. As you work that all the way around, it's really thick and, and bulky. You go ahead and you finish off your work. And with this yarn, it's really easy to weave in your tail. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Because the yarn is so thick, you really don't have to worry too much about weaving in ends with a tapestry needle. We could actually, I'm gonna finish this off right here. We can actually just take our tail and working, I'm going just, I'm just poking my hook in right there. No, no specific place or anything. I'm just poking it in, grabbing my yarn, the tail, and pulling it through. And then maybe I do it on this side. I poke it this way and grab the yarn and pull it through. Like I'm just kind of weaving it back and forth because this isn't anything I'm going to wear. Obviously, it's just getting put up on the shelf. You can't tell that I'm just weaving the tails through. I've went this direction for a little bit. Maybe I come back the opposite way to make sure it doesn't come undone. And I'm just pulling the tail through, just like before. So I'm putting my hook in, grabbing it, and pulling it through, just like that. So it becomes really easy just to weave it in that way. You don't have to worry too much about it, okay? 
All right, now you've got a really super cute crochet stocking that uses some fantastic cabling and post stitches and a really fun furry cuff. Um, really easy to do and it's it's super fast. Like the cuff just really makes it right and it takes maybe you know two minutes to get around. Just remember, rely on the feel of the seam as you're pulling through with your hook and that'll make things a lot easier. You're not gonna be able to see the actual stitches. You just have to do it by feel. Once you do that, you are ready to hang this up at your mantle and stuff it full for uh, um, of all your fun stuff and hopefully it's not cold. And uh, Santa Claus will come to your house and give you some fun uh, Susan Bates implements and Red Heart yarn. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and you will hit subscribe so you know whenever I put out a new video. And if you did like it, please give it two thumbs up so that Red Heart knows that you enjoyed the video and YouTube knows you enjoyed the video and I know you enjoyed the video. I am Marley Bird for RedHeart.com. I will talk to you guys again soon. Bye-bye. I really hope you enjoyed making this owl baby hat and you will run out, grab your yarn and hook, and get started on your very own. I do enjoy...